Today we're going to do a quick rundown of what happened at Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 this year, being 2022, with the Smoke Monster. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and yes, that is not the smoke monster back there. If you're not following me on Instagram or you're not a patron, you probably don't know that we picked up a new project car and on top of it, a new project motor to go in said project car. There's going to be a video on that later on. If you do know, congratulations because you're in the know. If you're interested in what we're going to be doing behind the scenes with the new car and the new motor, six liter over here. Make sure and check out our Patreon. It's also a great place to get help with tuning. Now let's talk about the Smoke Monster, which is over here. I'll move the camera and we're going to talk about Rocky Mountain Race Week. What went well, what went terrible and why we didn't finish. Okay. So Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 took place in Noble, Oklahoma City. Technically Noble is a different town, but Thunder Valley. Uh, most of you are familiar with that. Then down in Ennis, Texas, the Texas Motor Speedway not Texas Motor Speedway, Texas Motorsports Park, and then up at Tulsa at whatever they call Tulsa. We did two days up in Tulsa. So it is a was a five day long event, technically six because there was a drive day in between, uh, but you take averages for the first four days. So Noble, uh, Dallas, or Ennis, and then the two days at Tulsa. And there was a drive day between the two days in Tulsa. So where we started, where we got to, et cetera. Like, you guys know the 598 Smoke Monster, Big Block, Chevy, Naturally Aspirated. We were actually the sponsors of the Naturally Aspirated Big Block class this year for 2.0. Super honored to have that, uh, seeing our stickers out there on everything on the back of the shirts, you know, our logo. Super cool. We're going to be sponsoring more in the future, so keep your eyes peeled on that. But uh, 411, Ford 9-inch in the rear end, the gear vendor showed up the week after I got back. So we were stuck with 411s and a power glide in this thing, we did not really go above 55 mile an hour on the highway the entire trip. Really slow driving. And of course, we were having overheating issues. Not really overheating. It was running about 210, which as you know, whenever you're not running antifreeze is really you're getting to that boiling point. And so, and it was just miserably hot. So we go out there first day, Tulsa or uh, Noble Thunder Valley, and just having all kinds of fits. And I'll explain to you why we had fits kind of as we get closer towards the third and fourth day on here. But we managed, I believe, an 11.7. Super disappointing. The car is not getting off the line at all. Uh, we're not turning in good 60 foot. We're turning in like 1.8 to 2 seconds 60 foot times. The car's falling on its face. It's just not running well. It's not back having. We're losing power on the top end. Very frustrated. So we get done with that night, wake up the next morning, and drive nine hours down to Dallas. Uh, brutal drive during the day, during the heat just miserable the whole way down there. Uh, get down there about four o'clock, proceed to race, and we're starting to get a little bit kind of figured out. We end up getting an 11.3 to turn in, and then we're just having nothing but issues up on the trans brake, trying to set the, the uh, launch on this. You know, we have a soft two-step on this just for controlling RPMs on launch because if you leave it just off the trans brake, it'll run up to about 5,000 to 5,500 RPMs, which is too much torque for this thing, and it'll just absolutely smoke the rear tires off so we were having that issue all during the second day got that 11.3 turned in and we're kind of in the hunt for third place right now still disappointed we have some competition there's a couple cars that's running right there in the mid 11s with us so we drive actually we leave at 11 o'clock that night and drive almost all the way up to Tulsa another about nine hour drive I think we got about seven hours out of it out of the way Put the towel in at nine, uh, six o'clock in the morning, got a hotel room in Oklahoma, then got up the next morning and finished out the rest of the drive. So the next morning, as we were kind of getting an idea of what was going on in Ennis, we decide that honestly what it is, it's, it's the Holly. And I'm gonna do a whole video behind this, why I am officially done with Holly EFI controllers. I'm never installing another one again, ever. Just not happening. Uh, there's too many brands out there that do things right. Holly does about everything wrong. And uh, as I said, I'll get into the meat and potatoes of why that is my opinion. I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with me, but after installing a fuel tech on the Typhoon and seeing how the other half live, I will never install another Holly, especially after a week of nothing but complications, troubles, and this thing just doing stupid crap that makes no sense, like trying to stay in closed loop whenever you're on the two-step. Why? Why would you ever allow your ECU to do that? 
And then one of my other favorite things is, is if you choose a box and you search for that term to try and figure out what that thing does, it's not even represented in the manual. It's worthless. Holly EFI, I'm sorry, junk. And once again, there'll be a long 10, 15 minute long video where I go over specific reasons why this is, but with fuel tech, max ECU, hall tech, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on of people that are dedicated to designing these devices, supporting these devices. Holly does not care about their people. Holly does not care about you. You are just a nameless person with money out there and you're giving your money to them. And it is reflected in the way they support their products and how junky their products are compared to their competitors, which are meeting their price points now with way better devices. And to give you an idea, what we ended up doing the third day that we're racing, the first day at Tulsa, we disabled 99% of the stuff in the Holly and turned it into the dumbest injector controller and timing controller on the face of the planet. Literally, it might as well be mechanical fuel injection with a distributor at this point in time. I do a lot of data logging, pull that data out and put it into Megalog Viewer, uh, which is kind of the base data logger for uh, Viewer for the Megasquirt stuff, but I love it for everything because it supports any kind of data logs. Brought it in there, made adjustments, built a fuel table off of that. We loaded that up. And so we ran an 11.3 and 11.7. First rip out with this thing with a manual table I created and disabling all of the closed loop system and stuff like that, we run a 10.7. So we shave between half a second and a full second off of our quarter mile time by dummying out all the stuff on the Holly. And I was officially done with it at that point in time. We turned in an 11.7, obviously for, for that day. Go out, do the drive between days three and days four that night. Next morning we get up and we're doing the math, crunching the numbers and find out that we need an 1168 to get second place. Uh, car just doesn't have it in it. And the main thing behind that is we're losing power on the top end. The intake manifold, which I always knew was a little bit small for this motor, for this displacement, was choked off. So above 5,000 RPMs, this thing just has no power. I've got a solution. Uh, I've got a G the biggest intake manifold Brodix makes for this set of heads. It is just huge, huge 4,500 intake on it. We're going to send it off and do a fuel injection conversion on it and all that stuff. So all that out of the way, we're locked in at third place whenever we leave Tulsa Friday, or actually Thursday night, Friday being the last day in Noble. Uh, we leave at about eight o'clock at night because we're wanting to drive at night to get through Tulsa traffic at night, to drive whenever it's cool outside because during the day we're sweating to death. The car's running warm. You know, we can run at 185 to 190 at night. We leave at night. We get to the last checkpoint, about a thousand miles into the drive at this point in time. It's Pops, you know it if you're from Oklahoma City or the Oklahoma era, area. We're at Pops, we stop, fill up, get gas, go to pull out, and suddenly there's a car behind us flashing our lights, and I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? Did we, is the trunk open? Did we leave the toolbox behind because we had to move it out of the way to get to the gas tank? And we can't figure out what's going on. That car comes screaming by us, followed by two cops, and right about that time, a big explosion, our passenger side rear wheel literally separated the wheel, not the tire, the bead lock on the wheel separated. It should be noted here that RC Comp was aware whenever I called Monday what happened to us. They had already started cutting a new set of wheels and asked that we go ahead and send the wheels back in for them to investigate. Total fluke ordeal, they had never seen it happen. Amazing customer service from those guys over there. They have definitely earned a customer for life. Call a bunch of people to ask if we can borrow a set of real wheels, drive all the way down to Noble, or have somebody haul us down to Noble, come all the way back, swap the wheels out, et cetera, et cetera, because we weren't really in it for the trophy so much as after last year, only making it two days. We just wanted to see if we could complete the event, and it's, you know, being 40 miles from the finish line, that was a completion for us. So we made the decision, we're exhausted, let's go ahead, Go down, grab the trailer, load the thing up, and throw the towel in. I can get started home a day earlier. And I know a lot of people are like, well, that's not in the spirit of the event. But honestly, you know, the event is what you put into it and what you want to get out of it. And we had a lot to prove last year, after last year, to say that we had a car that could do this. Now, it still needs a lot of work. As I said, we got to fix that intake manifold issue. We got to get the overdrive in there so we can drive a little bit faster going down the highways. We're not spending all the time in there. I could 
throw a little insulation in the cab and things like that. But 10.7s on the board, low 10s are not going to be an issue. Uh, and then we could also look at possibly doing a cam and, and really get this car where it needs to be in the high nines because it is a high nine second car. One of the other issues that I forgot about was the rear shocks on this thing don't have enough travel. I put those, I spec those out whenever I had multi-leafs. And then after I put the split monos on here, I forgot all about it. We were up on the lift the Friday before, noticed that they were too short. I went online to try and get a set ordered. They weren't going to ship until Tuesday with an overnight of Wednesday. Well, we would have already been, you know, halfway through the event by the time we got them. So I didn't even bother at that point in time. So we did have some traction issues off the line, cutting a uh, 160. 60 foot was our best. Maybe we got down a little bit below 160, but 160 was decent. It just wasn't uh, able to get into the power. We were launching at about 4,400 as the max that we could get this thing to launch at and still keep traction. And I think that we were starting to unload the tires because I, it felt like something like that. Maybe we we're having some slippage on there. So that is kind of the rundown. I want to give you guys some heads up. As I said, I'll be doing a video very soon on why I hate Holly. Full blown, just no holds barred. Sorry, Holly, just done with you. Done with you after problems with Terminators, problems with snipers, now problems with an HP. I'm just done with the junk. I'm gonna start using nothing but quality ECUs, even if that means putting a mega squirt in because I at least know what to expect from whatever, whatever I get. You know, probably gonna be seeing a lot more fuel tech on the channel and maybe some other brands out there, but I will say unequivocally right now, Holly is my least favorite ECU. I'd rather have a stock uh, ECU and just use HP tuners at this point in time if I could get it to work with the big block. But I can't, but I can with the six liter that we're gonna put into the new project car. So keep your eyes peeled with that. We're gonna be doing a full series about doing an engine swap, cheap on a cheap budget. That's the whole purpose cool car to do it. And this car is going to be more of a driver. We're not shooting for a thousand horsepower like we are on something like this. We're shooting for about 500 to 600 drivable, comfortable horsepower. You'll want to stick around for that if you haven't subscribed already, because we will be going through the mods that we're going to do on our six liter, the tuning involved with it, kind of like going through and all the fun stuff on doing swaps and doing it for a cheap budget. So I'm going to get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, APT, always be tuning.